So um, there's a couple things I'm going to show you guys how to do this problem in kind of three different or two ways, and then I'll show you a kind of mistake that a lot of students make. So when we looked into simplifying radicals, there's two different ways that we learn how to do this. The first way we learned was using um, our prime factorization. And the second part was using our squared numbers. So if we're going to use prime factorization, basically what we're doing is we're, remember, rewriting our number as a list of its prime factors. So we just want to say, all right, you know, how can we break this down? What can we factor this by? And immediately I see it ends in a 5, so I know it's factorable by 5. So I could say um, 9 times 5. Then I can break 9 into 3 times 3. So basically, the square root of 45 is the same thing as the square root of 3 times 3 times 5. Does everybody agree? But 3 times 3 times 5 is the prime factorization. Do you guys agree with me on what I did? OK. So now, what we talked about was when you're taking the square root, the square root means you know, taking what number multiplied by itself. Well, the square root of 3 times 3, when we have that pairs for the square root, we can take out that pair. So my final answer was 3 squared of 5. All right, Luis, this would be very important for you to be paying attention at this point. Now, that was step number one. That was one way, all right? And there's nothing wrong with doing it that way. However, I would like to try to get everybody to start looking at it in a little bit quicker method. Um, and the next, quick, the next method that we discussed was determining which, what is the largest square number that divides into 45. So our square numbers, the closest one we have is 36. 36 doesn't divide into 45 evenly. Um, then we go into 25. 25 doesn't divide into 45 evenly. 16. 16 does not divide into 45 evenly. Then we have 9. Well, yeah, we know 9 divides into 45. So I rewrite this as 9 times 5. Right? Then I can simply take the square root of 9, which is 3. Square root of 5. And I'm done. So obviously, I would like everybody to get to this method. It's much quicker than doing this. But what's important about this is if you get stuck, can't do it this way, you can always go back and rely on this method. All right. Here's the pitfall, though, a lot of students make as well. What is wrong with this? Because 15 times 3 is? What's 15 times 3? 45. What's wrong with doing it that way, though? Well, the problem with 15 times 3 is this is not a square number, nor is this not a square number. So yeah, you could still do 15 times 3, but you'd have to go back to fi prime factorization. All right? But don't try to do this method by breaking up into 15 times 3. When you're doing this method, you have to break it up into square numbers. Right? 4, 9, 16, 25, so forth. 